Welcome back again to Vegas Live with Nina. And I have next to me, Hiro, um, an unusual name. Yes. And uh, uh, how, how, how did you get a name like that? Well, see, oh, see your mother and father <laughs> decided yeah, so, that when um, you were born. So, as with a lot of uh, Latin American families, it's usually um, traditional name the firstborn after the father. So, oh, the grandfather, the great grandfather, or the yeah. mother, or so the somewhere along the line, we have a lot of Hiros. But um, so you're, you became a Hiro. Yes, but not junior. I actually have a middle name, whereas my father does not. So, oh, so that's yeah. nice. So they don't call you junior. No, no, they you just. Know, I've never really quite liked a junior because it's sort of your secondary. Yeah, it's either your secondary or it's like saying, no, you got to live up to my standard. Yeah, which like, is your dad or your grandfather or somebody. Yeah, you know? exactly. Sort of, you, you never are really your own person yeah. when you think about it, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I've I, never been a junior because I've got two younger ones and two older ones. And here am I in the middle. Anyway, so you play the, the, the oboe? The oboe, yeah. The oboe. Yeah. He plays the oboe, so which means it's telling my little brain up here that you're in an orchestra. Yes, I actually play principal oboe for Nevada Chamber Orchestra. Chamber um, Orchestra. Yeah, it's a it's a newer orchestra that um, you know here in Las Vegas. I actually play for two of the newer orchestras here. Um, so Nevada Chamber Orchestra is my so when I play principal for. I also work with the Las Vegas Sinfonietta. Now, is this more you know when we talk about an orchestra, we talk about classical. Yes. So is this more classical music? And you're saying. Two new ones, which means it's coming more into town and people are listening to classical music in Vegas. Yes, uh, actually both. So with Nevada Chamber Orchestra, we do a lot of um, like pop music. Like our, for example, our upcoming concert on July seventeenth is uh, movie music. Oh, how beautiful! Yeah, we usually do one a year. Movie musical. Yeah, um, but we actually pick uh, different selections from different movies. Uh, for example, this concert will feature uh, music from Titanic. Um, oh, how fabulous! Jurassic Park is on there. And, uh, so it becomes very entertaining. Yeah. So you're doing the musicals of the of the movie industry. Yeah. yeah we're doing little like music medleys and all that kind of stuff. Um, with Las Vegas Sinfonietta, it's a little more um, true classical music and bringing that sort of uh, like Beethoven culture to and Vegas. Brown and Tchaikovsky yeah. and yes, exactly. Frank Mananoff, Bach. Yes. I know yes. a few of them. <laughs> I was brought up in that actually. Um, so how long have you been doing this? This has been always been oh your, your business. Um, I've played oboe for the last twenty years professionally for the last six or six or seven years professionally. Really? Yeah. Professionally. Now, do you do this full time or is this a part time thing and you do something else or do you teach? Well, funny enough, a lot. It's like a lot with um, a lot of the entertainment industries. It's like one of many hats that you wear. Well, yes, so, I've, I've noticed that in yeah. Vegas. After interviewing so many people, there are dozens of hats they wear and different things they all yeah, do. So on one side, I perform professionally. On the other side, I also teach. And, I figured you'd be teaching. And I also work as a, when I'm not performing in the Las Vegas Sinfonietta, I actually assist my wife, who's their photographer. Oh. So, that's so, so kind of keep also, it in the business. Yeah. Yeah. So you're able to earn a living through what you actually do and you, what you actually the love of your of yeah. life or what you like to do. Yeah, exactly. I also work in education. So as a part-time or I guess more full-time job, I also work with um, in the special education department at Doral Academy, Red Rock. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. We deal with a lot of um, like high functioning autism or kids that have um, anxiety or depression issues. Or even, Can you find this brings them down or relaxes them? Well, I actually don't do any music with them. Oh. With them, it's purely um, helping them get through their day, helping them, you know, with um, school. Oh, so you don't nature. introduce them no. to the music. So that's a completely separate thing. Yeah, completely separate thing. Yeah. How do you how do you manage to do that? Because I've often, you know, you, you, you see these young children that, you know, have these disabilities and, you know, you have to care for them and look after them a lot, you know, because that's what they need. Well... Uh, I find that a lot of it is just recognizing that they are human beings just like us. They have their own issues. We all have our own issues. Kind of. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, so when, when it comes to a child with, you know, anxieties, you have to sort of try to figure out, okay, what triggered it? How do we, you know, help calm you down? Um, yeah. For me, I get them breathing exercises. With, is that to do with bipolar and all that stuff? Yeah, a lot. Yeah, a lot of that. We don't have, like, a whole lot of, um, you know, those students, but... A lot of our students are, you know, high-functioning autism, where they can do math really, really well, 
but well, they English, say they're on the brink of, of being, you know, yeah. highly intelligent. You've got these two waves. You're very, very intelligent, and, things, and then you've got the other wave that jump on like a child. Yeah, and yeah. like they have trouble expressing themselves. So it's kind of my job to help them express, express themselves. themselves. Yeah, yeah. to so, find out what they're like. Um, if we're in an English class, it's my job to help them, you know, figure out that they want to say, oh, you know, such and such thing. Okay, well, what are you thinking? Help me, you know, yeah. understand this. Okay, this is what you're trying to say here. Go ahead and write this down for you. For yourself. So, so, with all the experience you've had, have you? Do you feel you've been very successful with these children? I would say I have. Yeah. Yeah. Because you seem to be a very calm, <clears throat> excuse me, quiet person that can sort of. Because I would imagine these children, a lot of them don't like noise and don't like you know dramatic things going on because they're very calm. Yeah, I find that um, being loud and you know yelling at them does nothing. Doesn't help. No, no, it doesn't I think help. it makes them probably. I would imagine. I don't know. No. I would imagine it makes them a little bit more anxious to have more yeah, anxiety. Yeah, they, have, they have... then become very anxious, very closed off, and that's not what you want. You want them to feel that they can trust you. Now, they're obviously, are they born like this, or is there something inherited as they start, you know, as of birth? And... That part I'm not so sure about, um, but either way, I don't think it, you know, really matters. I'm there to do my job. Do you, you have know? to do you have to have a doctor's license, or do you have to... Um, for my job specifically, yes. no. No, my job is they're more looking for an interpersonal relationship type thing. Now, how does this coincide with your music? Well, so... Two tranquillities. <laughs> so as Principal Oboist, I'm actually sort of in charge of, you know, my I'm in charge of my own section and to a greater degree sort of responsible for uh, pitch across the orchestra because um, if you go to an orchestra concert, the first cohesive sound you hear from the orchestra is the Oboist playing an A and then the various sections tuning to that one note. Oh, really? Yeah. So, yeah, I did not know how important the oboe was. Yeah, and the only reason we do it is because the oboe has such a, um, it has such a powerful sound that I it actually cuts through definite, and you can hear it's it the entire definite, time. It's a very definite sound. Yeah, so yeah. with that, I have to be able to manage not only my own section, but how I talk to the conductor, how I talk to the section leader next to me. How oh, so you have to get all these people together to... Yeah, and even to the people behind me. Um, you had Dr. Liz Valvano on your show yes, a few weeks ago. Yes. Um, so she and I are actually great friends, and she plays principal bassoon right behind me. No, she has the bassoon, which is that great big long thing. Yes. And everything else. I was fascinated with that, actually. And she was lovely. She was oh, so yeah, sweet. yeah. She's, she's yeah. an amazing person. I yeah, love talking is, to her. Yeah, I, I can imagine. Yeah, she's, very, she's also got this kind of little sense of humor as well. Yeah. You know, as well. yeah. So now, how often do you get to play? Is it once a week, or how you know, do you have these concerts? Um, it really depends on the concert season um, and what we're I don't we're know. There was a concert season probably more in the winter, isn't it? Um, it sort of starts kind of like with uh, school, where we go into from fall all the way to like late spring, early yeah, summer. Yeah, yeah. That's um, kind of kind of... Nevada Chamber Orchestra is kind of strange in the way that we continue to perform year-round. <laughs> um, in the heat? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's... It, yeah. Kind of tough. Do you do a lot of outdoor concerts? No, no, Thank thankfully goodness. not. Thank thankfully goodness. not. I'm very like for me personally, I'm very much against it because my instrument is made out of wood. Oh, it would be lovely, wouldn't it? All cracking yeah. up. You'd have, yeah, a, so, you'd have a sound of its own. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely avoid doing outside concerts. That, that being said, I have done them before. Um, when I played with Henderson Symphony years ago. I played oboe and English horn for a uh, movie concert they did. Was... In, the reason I ask that question is because in Europe we have, and I lived in Beirut as well, and we have a lot of orchestras um, at night, mm -hmm. but, uh, on the evening time, and uh, outside, and absolutely beautiful. And it's so lovely because you've got all this sort of the uh, lovely atmosphere, but it's normally not in a very noisy place. It's usually in a very quiet place, and especially in Beirut, it was in you know the old ruins and everything. Mm -hmm. It's just fabulous. It's yeah, beautiful. It, yeah, I imagine it's very wonderful doing a concert outside in that sort of venue. Yeah. Do you ever get to travel anywhere? Or do um, yeah, I'm actually going to be traveling here very soon to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I got into an international no, music I meant festival. outside of America. <laughs> yes. I'm in Europe. <laughs> oh, outside of America. Yes, I have. Um, I actually grew up going um, across the border to Tijuana, Mexico. Oh, how fabulous. And I've also gone to um, Colombia as well. And I'm hoping to go back to Colombia here, um, you know, in the Next few years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you like to travel with the group? Is it fun? Um, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Um, most of the traveling, I I will say, I do is by myself. Um, mostly because you know, the Bad Chamber Orchestra, Las Vegas, and the other were sort of groups that just stay here. Do you get in Vegas. hired by, by other by other orchestras? Um, usually, if well, here in town because we have so few, um, yeah. it's usually. Just either you know Nevada Chamber Orchestra, Las Vegas Infinita, or so you um, have UNLV. an agent. Yeah, you have an agent then. Yes, myself. 
<laughs> That's usually the best agent. Yes. Um, yeah. Not knocking the agents, but yeah, to, to, to go do. Do you do ever think as a as a child and growing up that this is what you would do? Is this is was one thing you wanted to do, or how? Because I often wonder how do people get into classical music? Because classical music is it has to truly be a love. Yeah. A love of life, because it's, it's 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 in the music industry, it's something completely of its own. It's not the rap, it's not the blues, it's not any of that romantic stuff. Mm -hmm. Though, what you're doing with yeah. the musical. Yeah, I found that early on as a child, I always knew that I was going to perform. But later on, when I became an adult, I realized mm, I want to teach more than I want to perform. Oh, really? Yeah, no, because I found that I'm as a soloist, I don't really care to do that. Um, I don't really you care don't to like stand. The atten he doesn't like the no, attention. I don't. You don't like the attention I don't, yourself. I can do it. I can do it. Um, yeah. But I don't care to stand in front of the orchestra. I prefer to play within the orchestra. With the, within it. And I prefer to teach you know younger students how to do what I do. Yeah. And how to um, you know sort of gain the musical intelligence to make the decisions. Why do we have so many um, Asian young Asian people going into orchestras and into, into the mm. quieter music business? Yeah, I a lot of them. You know, I want to say it's something with the culture. They're sort of yeah, their culture. They have this Definitely. drive to be the best. No I know, and they they, they, they they work and they work and they work and they do become the best. Mm -hmm. You see these little girls, you know, fiddling away and doing their thing and everything, but but they're very dedicated to what they do, and I can't say that's you know much for a lot of you know yeah people. Yeah, I I wish I knew why. But... <laughs> well, let it be a mystery. Yeah. How can anybody reach you if they want to book you? Well, I'm available through um, Instagram. My handle is Hiro underscore Obo. That's J A I R O underscore O B O E. Um, available through Instagram. I believe my email is on there, so you'll. It's the easiest place to find me. Great, fabulous. Well, it's been a little interesting, a little different to my last guest, who's all over the place, and you're very quiet and very calm. Bring me back down to earth. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, mean I want to thank uh, Social Media Shows, um, my producer Maria Pereza. And of course, we've also got Ryan back here. He's taking all the photographs. And um, I also want to thank, um, you know, Vegas. Uh, they'd be very good to me. And thank you for my audience. And thank you for all being there. And uh, there's a message coming up at the end of all these shows. So stay tuned. I'll be right back. Take care.